I said, okay, Lord, I get to share. I got my prayer answered pretty quick. <laughs> In less than two weeks, I get to share. So I'm very grateful. I wanted to pray not only for myself here, but my husband is right now preaching at the Hydesville Church. Hydesville Seventh-day Adventist Church, and that's why I'm here and he's there. <laughs> so I would like us, if you don't mind, to pray together, not only for me that the Holy Spirit will help me to be able to communicate well what God has put on my heart, but that he will also bless my husband as he's seeking in another church to communicate what God's put on his heart. Let's bow our heads for an additional prayer, please. Dear loving Father in heaven, as we come to you this beautiful Sabbath morning, we are just so grateful for your loving presence. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit, Lord, and we just pray that you would be with us. Forgive all of our sins, Father. Cleanse us by Jesus' blood. Please give us your Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill our hearts with you. Help me to be able to communicate what you've taught me, Lord. Help David to be able to communicate, too, at the Highsville Church, where he seeks to share as well. And Father, help us each to learn and to grow and to receive the blessing that we each need today from your Holy Spirit. I pray this for those of us here assembled and for those that are listening on the internet as well. And I just thank you in advance for all your loving blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The title of this sermon or, is Hide the Word. Here we go. Excuse me just a moment. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my testimony about how I met Jesus when I was in my 20s. and. Um, some of the things that he's done in my life to help encourage me that I hope will be an encouragement to you as well. When I graduated from nursing school and I started my first job, and life was exciting and fun to have a new career and, and all my hard work going to nursing school. And, but yet, my life wasn't complete. I had just these feelings and these needs inside that were unmet. I just really longed for inner peace. And I really, I wanted real joy in my heart. I had all these kind of external things and these things on the outside and, and all, but I didn't have real deep joy inside. And I also knew deep in my heart that I wasn't right with God, that I had sins in my life and I didn't know how to get rid of them. But I wanted to get the sins out of my life out of my mind, I wanted to be right with God. I wanted peace with God, too. Well, what I needed, as this picture is a little schematic to say, is I needed Jesus in my heart, not just on the outside, but I needed Jesus in here to be close to me and to really make a difference in my heart and in my life. One day, I was praying as best as I knew how back then, and I had a sort of a still small voice talk, talk to me, or like a, almost like a spoken thought in my mind. It said, read the Bible, it's the truth. I thought, wow, I think God's talking to me. Now, I had a Bible. I was not raised reading, reading the Bible, but I had a Bible because when I was in nursing school, one of my teachers had given me a Bible. And I didn't know what to do with it, so I put it on a shelf because I thought it looked holy. But I didn't know how to read the Bible. And so I thought, well, I think God wants me to read the Bible. So I started reading it. And there was a lot I didn't understand, but uh, I was reading it. And, uh, oops, I went one too far. There we go. I'm sorry, I'm getting the hang of these little slides here. There we go. Well, the Bible talks about scripture as being a two-edged sword. And so I started to experience conflicts, conflicts between what my life was experiencing, what I was going through in my own life, and conflicts also in what the church I grew up in was teaching. So I had all these conflicts between what the Bible was saying and how I was living and how I was thinking 
and also the conflicts between what the church that I had grew up in was teaching. Well, God is good because He He answers our hearts' cries. Amen. And so that dusty book that had been on the shelf as I began to read it, and as I began to ask the Lord to help me understand, God started doing some really special things in my life. I met a woman who I worked with, and she taught me how to have a relationship with God through the Bible. And I would see her at her job, at our job, bow her head and pray, eat her lunch, and then she would read her Bible and she'd go back to work. So after about a week or two of watching her, I went up to her and I said, excuse me, are you a Christian? And she said, yes, I am. I said, really? I said, I want to be a real Christian. Will you help me? Will you teach me how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible? Will you teach me how to be a Christian? And she said, I will. I'll be happy to. So we started meeting before work, after work, or during a lunch hour, depending on whenever it was convenient in her schedule. And she taught me how to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit and how to read my Bible, and how to make, live my life according to the Word of God. It was a real, it was the best time of my life ever because it was so exciting to learn about God and about truth from His Word. There's nothing like it. For those of you that already have experienced it, it's the best thing ever. And for these, those of you that haven't, I really want to encourage you to really experience God through His Word because that is just... Nothing more wonderful. Yeah. Well, as I began to continue to read the Bible, I, you know, I had these other uh, influences in my life. There's no real absolute truth, you know. Truth is all relative, you know. Well, it's your own truth, you know. But the more I began to read the Bible, the more I began to really see that absolute truth is in the Word of God. It's it's not found anywhere else. The Bible says in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And that's our one absolute authority for what's the truth. What's the right thing to do? What's the right thing to think? What is right and what is true? Well, I came um, to um, Exodus 20. And there were the Ten Commandments. And as I started reading them and conforming my life into harmony with them, and um, I began to see that uh, there was a big conflict between the Fourth Commandment and the church that I had raised in. Because I was raised in going to a church on Sunday. And yet, the Bible said that the seventh day is the Sabbath. I thought, well, when is exactly the seventh day? So I got out my dictionary, and the dictionary says Sunday is the first day of the week, and Saturday is the seventh day of the week. And I went, oh, I need to go to church on Saturday instead of Sunday. So I got out the phone book, and I found a church. I found several different churches that went to church on Saturday. And so that's how I ended up starting to go to a Seventh-day Adventist church. And that's how the Lord led me. Now, in Ecclesiastes, it's Astes 8, 4, you see it on the screen there, where the word of a king is, there is power. I needed power because I had seen what the Bible said. I saw that the Bible says in the Ten Commandments that the seventh day is the Sabbath, and that's the day that we are to worship and keep holy. But I had family, friends. At the time, I was in the process of planning a wedding with a man who kept Sunday um, as his worship day, so I had a lot of comments between everything everybody I knew was doing and what the Bible said. But God not only tells us what we are to do, he gives us the power to do it. And that's one of the most wonderful things about the Word of God, that it's living and powerful. And so what happened is that God gave me the power to do the right thing. And uh, what happened, just to finish my testimony there, is that I was praying, Lord, what should I do? <laughs> you know? um, and, uh, and God gave me the grace to do the right thing. God's word gives us the power, not to be, I don't mean to be disrespectful with this picture, but I thought it really depicted that God's word, his words, when we receive them in our heart, gives us the power to do whatever it is. 
he asks us to do. We can overcome temptations. We receive wisdom and guidance through his word, as we heard about earlier in our Sabbath school. We receive moral and spiritual strength to resist the temptations and to choose to do the right thing with his grace and power and the Holy Spirit in us. And when we read the word of God, we receive his thoughts in our mind and we begin to think and then we can do his good will. And then we have help through the word of God to bless others as well. Well, back to my testimony for a moment here when I was reading the Exodus 20 and the Sabbath commandment, you know, it was clear what God wanted me to do. And so I kind of struggled a little bit. I wavered for a few seconds with, you know, can I really go forward with this? But like I said, God gave me the power. By that time, God had won my heart because I saw in the word of God that God cared about me as an individual. He cared about me when my heart hurt. He cared about me when I was struggling, when I had a hard day at work, or he cared about me when I prayed and asked him to bless someone who I loved. He answered my prayers and he was there for me every step of the way. Well, as I was reading in the Bible, I read Acts chapter five, verse 29, and it said, we ought to obey, obey God rather than men. When I saw that scripture, that conflict of the balance between was I gonna follow the Bible about the seventh day Sabbath or was I going to follow what my church and my family, my friends and my about to be husband was doing. And when I saw that struggle, I said, Lord, I'm gonna obey you no matter the cost. And when I pray that prayer, I can't, it was the most amazing experience I've probably ever had. I just felt this whoosh of power. I actually felt God's power pour into my body. I had such a strength and such a resolve. It has carried me through to this day that I was able, no matter what happened, because I had lots of opposition that followed after that, to stay strong. Lord, I'm going to do whatever you ask. Whatever your word says, I'm going to do it because I want to honor you first and foremost. And God gave me that grace. And it's not that, that I had it in me. I didn't. I just said, yes, Lord, I'll do what you say. And then he poured in the power into me that I needed to carry me through, to carry out that decision and to live it until this day. Now, let me just go down. I'm missing the slide there. Excuse me just a moment. Now, there's a, there's a quote that, I was, that I've learned, and it's in the fifth line of the testimonies, um, by a book by Ellen White, fifth line of the testimonies, page 181. And this is a wonderful quote. It says, system is everything. And when I read that and heard it, I thought, system is everything. That's interesting, because everything is what? <laughs> I mean, everything encompasses a lot, doesn't it, in our life? When I think it's the word system, I tend to think of something like, you know, more something like something that's computerized or a factory, something that is really systematized. But I began to realize that I needed system in my spiritual life. I needed a system in my relationship with God. Because what I realized is the Word of God had become powerful and precious to me. But I needed a system to get the Word of God in my mind and into my life so I could experience his presence and his power every single day of my life, and that I would know what his will is and be, and be able to live it out. So, I actually had a friend of mine who went and heard a sermon by a Christian psychiatrist, and he gave a sermon on how to hide the word of God in your heart, as it says in Psalm 119.11, our scripture reading, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So he developed a system based on how our brains memorize to actually have a system on how to memorize scripture. A little show and tell here. So what I did is I went out and got the prettiest little box I could find. And you can do this electronically, but I like paper <laughs> still, a little old fashioned. And so I actually got a little box, and it was it is my scripture memorization system. Okay, and here's the program. Choose three to seven Bible verses that you want to memorize. 
verses that have meant something to you, verses that you think you might want to share with someone else, or verses that you want to remember what God says about a particular subject. I write these verses on a card. I review them every day for 30 days. Then I review them weekly for seven weeks, and then I review them every month ongoing so I can permanently have them retained in my mind. This is a picture um, that I took of my little five boxes. I figured if I show you up here, you're not going to be able to see it very well. But basically, I have little sections. I have my daily section, weekly section, monthly section, and then in the very back, I have my upcoming section. Because sometimes as I'm reading and studying the Bible and devotional books during the month, I'll come across a verse I really want to memorize, and I don't want to forget. I want to memorize that verse. So I'll write it on a card, and I'll put it in the upcoming section. So by the time the next month comes along, I've got them ready and waiting for me. This system has served me well. This is actually my second box. I filled up my first box because I've been doing this for several years now, and now I'm on my second box. But I can't tell you the blessing that it's, it's been. It's just really, really helped me a lot. Let me give you one example of how this has been a blessing to me. I started to want to learn more about the book of Revelation because I had read how important the book of Revelation is in these last days. And so I had started reviewing verses about and different subjects from Revelation. I was just in the process. I hadn't even finished memorizing them all yet. And my husband at the time was teaching a class, a Bible class, in a retirement center. And there were a group of senior citizens that would come every Sabbath afternoon and they would, every week, and they would come to his Bible class. Well, one week he wasn't able to teach his class, so he asked me to go and teach his class for him. And these were lessons that were pre-printed, and I just had to go through the lesson and read it to them. It was very easy to do. Well, at the end of the class, there were a couple ladies that stayed behind, and one of them asked me the million-dollar question, can you explain some things to me out of the book of Revelation? <laughs> and she asked some really hard questions. And I thought, oh my, I just had started reviewing these verses. I wasn't really sure where they were. I knew they were in the book of Revelation, but there's 20 some chapters in the book of Revelation, I thought, am I going to be able to find these verses, and am I going to be able to answer her questions? So I'm silently <clears throat> praying, and the Lord, it was so amazing, the Lord led me. I would just flip a page, and I'd find a verse and answer a question. I'd flip a page, i look around, I think it was around chapter 19 or whatever, answer a question. We had an impromptu Bible study there. We, it went almost a half an hour which is question after question that she had and answered them from the book of Revelation. And what I realized is that if we do our part to study the Bible, to read the Bible, to memorize as best we can, to review it as best we can, if we put the words in our heart, even if we can't quite remember where it is, if we have a familiarity with it, the Holy Spirit can guide us with the holy angels and can help us to find the right verses we need. That lady left there rejoicing that day. I left rejoicing that day, too. I was so excited what God had done. It's just powerful what he's able to do. You know, when you, in your everyday life, when you come up to trials and troubles and temptations, we can follow the example of Jesus. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted by Satan, what did he do or how did he handle those temptations? He had a phrase, it is written, and then he quoted a Bible verse. And that's our weapon, that's our defense, that's our help to connect with God through his word when we are tempted. It is written, and we make a choice, we choose to live by the word of God, what it says, and God will give us the power, he will give us the grace, and he will see us through. It's a supernatural power that we need. As I read previously in Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Jesus Christ is king of kings. He's lord of lords. He has the power we need, and we need to give him permission. Jesus is a gentleman. He says, I stand at the door and knock in Revelation 3.20. He doesn't barge in into our lives or, into, or forces even his love or his help upon us. But when we invite him to help us, he is so willing and waiting and wanting He's been drawing us with his Holy Spirit, and then he will give us all we need. Well, there's more than just ourselves that we need uh, in terms of scripture. 
We need to be able to learn scripture to bless others. What are some ways that you can share Bible verses with others? I have a list here on the screen just to give you some ideas of things that, that have blessed me and that God has helped me to bless others. Um, whether you're sending a greeting card, a birthday card, you know, whether you're texting someone, if you're emailing someone, you're using social media, you can include a Bible verse. When uh, you can share tracts and have pre-printed Bible verses. There's BibleInfo.com, which is one of my favorite websites. It has topic verses listed by topics that you can use to share. Let's say someone's struggling and needing comfort. You can look up the word comfort. Or if someone's struggling with their faith, you can look up the word faith on BibleInfo.com. And you can find verses listed there that you can share with others. Or you can go to the store and buy a Bible promise book. And they've also got verses listed by subject that you can use when you want to find a verse and maybe you're not sure where it is in the Bible or you want some ideas on what might be something in that subject. If someone's struggling with their finances, you can find these things also listed either in a Bible Promise book or, for example, on BibleInfo.com. Uh, when you give your, um, when you, someone asks you, well, why do you do this or why don't you do that? When someone asks you a reason for your faith or a reason for your behavior, you can use scriptures to answer them. So you need that word hidden in your heart, meaning memorized in your mind and received into you so that you can answer when someone asks you a question. Um, I like interior decorating is one of my hobbies and I, when I decorate our home, I'm, I always try to find plaques that have scriptures on them, not only for our guests to come, but also for ourselves to keep the word in our hearts. And just a little aside, but um, you know, I had prayed when my husband and I moved here to Maryland um, last year to be able to be a blessing to our neighbors. And I pray that God would help us to really have a home that the angels love to come to, that Jesus felt welcome, and that was a restful, worshipful, peaceful place for us and for those who visited. And one of my neighbor's little boys came to visit one day for me to read him a story. And he looked around and he said, you really love God because I see God everywhere here. I'll tell you, that was such an exciting answer to prayer. I was so thankful because I wanted him and, or anyone that came to our home to really see Jesus. And uh, my husband collects, um, there's an artist who's passed away now, Harry Anderson. My husband collects his paintings and we have them around our, our home as well. But just to really draw our hearts to Jesus and to have those, those in our minds. And then pray to the Lord and ask him to lead you. If there's someone that you can actually do Bible studies with. I know I had gone to a, a retreat and they were in Nancy and you were with me too at that retreat. We went to have a Bible study and I was all excited. And the teacher was saying, well, you know, you just pray and ask the Lord to lead you to someone. So I was walking my dog like the week after that. And there was a lady in the neighborhood that was walking her dog. And I went up to her and I talked to her off and on, you know, I don't know her really well, but I just talked to her occasionally, and I went to her, and I started talking with her, and, and I said, you know, by the way, would you be interested in sometime getting together and doing some Bible studies? She said, I really would. I really want to learn more about the book of Revelation. But, oh, they picked the hard things first. <laughs> but I, so I went to the store, to the Christian bookstore, uh, the Potomac Adams bookstore down the road here, and I bought some Bible studies about uh, Daniel Revelation, because I learned that if you study Daniel, you'll um, have more success understanding the book of Revelation. And so we're going to be starting very soon studying about Revelation. So the Lord just leads perfectly, and he gave me a new friend that I'm excited to study with. And, you know, because I know that when I'm blessed, I want to share that blessing with someone else. And you know how it is when something happens you're really excited about? You want others to experience that excitement too. You want others to experience that same peace and joy that you found. And I know that through the Word of God and through prayer, I have found such a wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. He's so real. He's so personal. And I just long for others to experience Him as well. This is one of my theme verses. I've got on a plaque in my home. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. I remember praying, wanting joy in my heart and peace, and to become right with God and learn how to get these sins out of my life. And God answered all those prayers and did abundantly more than I could ask or think. And so I pray that he will do the same in each of your lives, in each of your hearts, every day. 
I'd like to make just a small appeal to give you an opportunity to, if it, the Lord is moving upon your heart, to make a, a commitment to Him. If you would like to commit to learning daily how to hide the word in your heart, if you would like to um, ask the Lord to give you special help and wisdom and grace on how to memorize scripture, how to study your Bible, how to have a relationship with Him, or a deeper relationship with Him through the Word of God, I'd like you to just raise your hand and then I'm going to have a special prayer for us. If any of you have that upon your heart, um, I'll be, let's just bow our heads and I'll have prayer for you. Dear loving Father in heaven, Lord, how grateful we are for the blessedness of your word and the blessedness of the Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus, who is the word of God. We just thank you so much, Father, for giving us the Bible, for protecting it for all these years. Thank you for giving us freedom in this country to worship you and to read our Bible and to pray openly and worship openly. We thank you for these right now, Lord, and we just pray you would extend them as long as you will. But help us to hide the word in our hearts. Help us to have a relationship with you through your word. Give us grace and power that we need from you to be able to be filled with your spirit, filled with your love, filled with your presence, and to have your words in our minds and in our hearts so we can not only be encouraged and strengthen ourselves and to honor you and obey you, but we can also be a blessing to others. Jesus, you're coming soon. Please help us all to be cleansed and ready. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.